Welcome to the Daily Meal for Wednesday the 6th of January 2021. We're going to get into it today with... After yesterday's news that we failed to sign Jason Mullenby, it looks like they're trying to sign another midfielder. Um, the Daily Record, the, um, the Scottish website, um, it's also a newspaper. Uh, if you don't know, it's sort of like the equivalent to the Sun in um, Scotland, although they have their own Scottish Sun. It's that type of newspaper. And we're we're going to go down. This is dailyrecord.co.uk, and it says him. Um, Millwall open talks regarding Motherwell ace Alan Campbell. The midfielder is out of contract at Fir Park at the end of the season. There he is, um, pointing. It'll fit in well down there, eh? Pointing, saying oh, I was supposed to pass it there. Um, Motherwell star Alan Campbell has attracted interest from English Championship side Millwall. 22 year old midfielder's contract with the Steelman expires in the summer, which means he can now speak to clubs about a move elsewhere. And the Scottish Sun claim that the Lions have now opened talks regarding the Scotland under 21 international. It's reported that Gary Rowe is uh, keen to make his move this month, but he faces competition from an, for a number of clubs for his signature. Campbell has netted twice in 21 appearances this season. He's one of a number of Motherwell players mulling over a new contract offer from the Fear Park Club who are currently searching for a new manager following Stephen Robinson's uh, resignation last week. Um, and they go on to talk about Motherwell a bit there. Nothing about Millwall. Um, yeah. So they're not doing too well. They've been on a, a streak like ours. They've had eight, eight games without a win. And we're apparently linked with a player who's playing for a team who can't win in the Scottish Premier League. They're near the bottom there. They're below St Johnston, where the Millwall players are on loan. So let's have a look at him. This here is from whoscored.com. They're the ones behind the, uh, the FL team in the week stats. And if we look here, you look on the number 74. Yeah. I've highlighted it there. That's Alan Campbell there. He's the 74th best player in Scotland, according to this um, whoscored.com website, with a rating of 6.72. He's played 1,600 minutes and 18 games, scoring two goals, putting four yellow cards. He's got shots per game of one, average, average out. But he's got a passing uh, percentage, uh, pass success rate of 82.2%. And an aerial uh, aerials one per game of 0.9. So he can't jump, can't tackle, but he's uh, he's good at passing the ball, which is more of what we've already got in Ryan Woods and Sean Williams. And what we really need is someone who can tackle the ball, take it off the opposition. Um, but it doesn't seem we're going to be getting that. If we click on the guy's name here, it will bring it up a bit more. Uh, he's only 22 years old. But we see he's defensive. So he's got an average of 1.9 tackles per game. Which is below average because the, the, um, the highest players in that league have around 3 tackles per game. Um... Yeah, and defensively he's not doesn't seem all that. Uh, one point eight in interceptions per game, zero point six clearance, zero point six, zero point five dribble, zero point seven blocks. Not not that good at all. Uh, key passes per game, zero point seven dribbling, zero point seven fouled, one point three offside, zero point one. Um, dispossessed from uh, one point four per game. But this one here is uh. Uh, the 2.4 on the end that's unscheduled touch that's a bad control per game 2.4 basically giving the ball away to the opposition through bad touches like this dispossessed means you got tackle for the ball and this 2.4 bad control per game is so well I guess 
to where someone passes to you and you don't control it you know, or go out for a throw in or you go to the opposition so that doesn't look too good either um, but we see here with the party pass is it a lot is that sideways I don't know I haven't seen him play I could go on the BBC iPlayer and watch sports scene have a look but they haven't, uh, won, they haven't won in 8 games so I'm not going to waste my time doing that but you see here he's got a high passing percentage rate and I think that's why we're looking at him because Gary Rowett is trying to build a team that just passes the ball around which is great but you've got to get the ball first team's got to be balanced uh, and you see here at the bottom where they haven't they've um, won a game they haven't won in 8 games but to be honest with you um, so it says here uh, let's go back to this his contract expires in the summer if he signs for a free and not a big bonus no problem with that but if we spend money to sign this guy just so we can bring him in in January and now I'm not, I'm not going to be too happy about that to be honest with you maybe I'm going to be wrong maybe he's going to be great but if we spend if we spend money to bring this guy in I'm not I'm not going to be too happy he's, got, he's going to have his work cut out for him uh, also today moving on um, they changed the kickoff time for the Huddersfield Town game which oh, seeing as we're not going to be go going to it anyway but if you're watching on iFollow it's, it's from millwallfc.co.uk Mill Football Club OS official, official site it was supposed to kick off at 7.45 it's now at 7 o'clock that's on the 20th of January barring any uh, neg negative positive tests um, for the you know what and that's in two weeks time so nice and early um, I, I imagine we're all going to be locked up unless you're a delivery driver or you're one of these people still working now maybe you're working in a supermarket or in a hospital that's kick off time 7 o'clock now on Wednesday the 20th and I'm just going to finish up today with this story that was on um, BBC sports site earlier today early this morning they published it and it's a, a little um, write up about Jimmy Carter uh, if any younger players don't know who Jimmy Carter is go and check him out go and wikipedia it go, go on to the Millwall history website um, he was a winger when we got promotion to the, we, the first division which was the, the highest division then but it, which got replaced by the Premier League in 87-88 88-89 only two seasons we've had in the top flight he was the winger then and this story on bbc.co.uk sport is written by Mandeep uh, Sangira it's all about um, Jimmy Carter being the first British Asian player to play in the Premier League it's written from that angle and it's pretty um it's interesting stuff I'm not going to uh, read it out because it's quite long but it basically says um, that his father was Indian and his, his name his father was called Carter as well it's, it's Carter, it says here Carter explains that his surname dates back to an English ancestor from the 17th century who after moving from London to India married an Indian woman and settled in the country his father Maurice was born to Indian parents in Kampur and brought up in Lucknow in the north of India where he attended Lamar Tienair College a prestigious private school established in 1845 under colonial rule but it says M Maurice was orphaned at the age of 14 and left lost with no family to speak of so he joined the navy when he was 16 so it's a pretty um pretty sad story there about um Jimmy Carter's dad. About Jimmy Carter was um 
His dad was a boxer in the in the navy. He had thirty eight fights and never lost one. Came to England, married an English woman, but after she had the Jimmy and his brother doesn't mention his brother's name here. And they actually stayed with the father, and Maurice took custody. And they grew up in Hackney, basically as Indian kids. Um, and then it goes through how more of Jimmy Carter growing up, how he was at Palace, Crystal Palace, and then they let him go, and he thought, ah. Oh, it was all over, but then he then he went to um, Queens Park Rangers before he went to Millwall. He's saying um, most people didn't know he was Indian. It does. He says here. Um, he says here. Jimmy Carter says hardly any of my teammates knew of my Asian heritage apart from Teddy. I always felt welcomed at Millwall, but I'd sometimes get a few racial comments from the opposition just because I looked a bit different. So only Teddy Sheridan knew he knew he was um Asian Indian. But I think some of the Millwall fans did know, but it doesn't really bother them. And then they go on to talk about how many eight British Asians have played in the Premier League. Michael Chopra, Desh Rahan. Um They're complaining about how there's only 0.25% uh, Asian professional footballers compared to 7% of the population and yeah it doesn't uh, it goes down here to the um, to the bottom where it says uh, he works as a co-commentator for radio and doesn't work for English Football League I think he used to work for um, Millwall in the uh, selling of the the hospitality but um, probably this season and last season um, I think they, they might have had to let him go because of um, basically there was nothing to sell really what with what's going on so uh, there's some good pictures there there's him with his uh, old man there in later years yeah I just thought this was really interesting I just wanted to share it with you um, if you're interested, go and, go and read the whole thing for yourself. Um, it's not too preachy on the race race issue, and it's a really um, good insight to um, Jimmy Carter, former Millwall player. And on that note, thank you for watching. Goodbye.